Okay. Jensen. Yes, the broadcast is live now. See? And this time, we are going to start with a dance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what is, do you think? This is always, you know, so impressed when I send uh, the video as well as the sample to our business partner. <laughs> I just thought, okay, how can we make this topic a little bit more interesting? And I thought, hey, let's start with a dance. Um, but I was not sure if it's allowed to use music. You know, I think if you, if you use music in something in, in a webinar like this, you probably have to, have to pay for this. And um, yeah, I just wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. Jemsen, hi. Hello. How are you? I am very nice. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon from Singapore. Okay. That's great. I think next time we have, we will produce a making of our webinars. I think that that will be a lot of fun. Um, because I think, let's see if I switch to here. Nah, yeah, Jensen, here we go. <laughs> I would think the making of our webinars would be very funny, especially the 30 minutes before the webinar. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, there was so much preparation, anxiety, <laughs> all kinds of options, you know. <laughs> and crashes, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have always wanted to show our, our, our audience, you know, the very best. You know, and, and we always come to a point that, you know, uh, which is the best option at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, also with the coincidence which happens, uh, I think it's fair to say that we have a big crash with your laptop in the preparation. Oh, my dear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, so now we are streaming from your handphone. Fortunately, <laughs> okay. it is, my Wi-Fi is strong enough. <laughs> okay, at least we have a backup option. Yeah, but I think it's funny. And I like the one um, I remember when, do you remember the one we had in the analyzer container, in the analyzer room, in the analyzer house? Yeah, yeah. Where, where we started and everything went so smooth and so perfect. And we thought, <laughs> okay, we are not live. <laughs> remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah. First of all, welcome everyone to our webinars. And um, Jensen from Singapore, great to have you on board here again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the second session where we are just alone with our topics, with our um, information and uh, we saw that uh, the number of attendees this time it's relatively low right i think 180 people signed up um i think we are blessed with so many people who registered to our events in the past that um even 180 people it felt in the in, in the beginning it felt a little bit oh is the, is the topic not right or uh, what is the situation? What do you think, Jameson? Why is so I less think, I think, I think the, the segment market, right? the market segment that we funnel down uh, to this ATEX, the explosion proof, uh, not everyone actually re like the power industries, like, uh, you know, 99% of the cement industry. There are, there are a few on the uh, zone two, uh, but it's not very critical. Therefore, we are finding down. I think this is one of the reasons for the ATAX. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The market segment, yeah. Yeah, and I still think that, um, I mean, this is probably also because of the Meet the Experts. Um, in the Meet the Experts in the past, where we had the big analyzer guys, mm -hmm. um, except Siemens, we, we focused quite a lot on emission monitoring. Mm -hmm. So maybe, I mean, uh, if we talk about a niche here with our probe sampling components, with the sample handling components, ATEX inside probe sampling is a niche, maybe in the niche. Um, 
But I think we are going to find out, honestly. Uh, we are going to find out if this is just the situation. I, I can tell many um, countries in Germany are still on vacation. I can imagine many people are still traveling. And um, yeah, but, but we will see. And at the end, I think it's not just about numbers. Um, remember when I think the Siemens webinar, we had the most people signed up, more than 600 people really signed up, <laughs> which is a, an incredible number. But I think at the end, it's very important that we reach out to the real experts um, who are working in this field and who are committed to this. Actually, okay. there are two, two, two of the event that exceeded 600, which is the... Uh, Siemens and ABB, yeah, but, but Siemens has the number is slightly higher, but two of them, ABB and Siemens, both of them actually exceeded 600. Wow, yeah, yeah, and w w when you look at the, w the views of the videos, um, at the end, I think with ABB, we, we reached 2,000 views. It's incredible. I mean, it's incredible, really. And and in VR and and ABB is uh, um, and Siemens is uh, same direction. So, yeah, I think it's just great. And I was in contact with many of our um, uh, people who are watching this um, after the webinar. I sent them a message, um, and I wanted to know what is your feedback. What do you think? And some people, I mean, I must admit. Probably the other ones did not reply, but um, the feedback was relatively positive. So people thought, uh, th there was one person who told me um, that uh, the, he, there were problems to access the webinar. Sometimes LinkedIn might have some dif difficulties there. Um, but uh, yeah, I think at the end, um, the, the feedback was very positive except some people said, okay, maybe we, we can go more deeper <laughs> and not stay so, you know, on, on the high level. And maybe this is really something we can do with our, um, with our yeah, future webinars. Um, and this is something we can also do uh, in our presentation today. And then I think we are going to do this. Okay, Jemsen, let me put it Ah, oh, it's working fine. Because we have to mention our our magic man <laughs> in, in the back. <laughs> Tobias is 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 there. <laughs> and Tobias is making this presentation sharing happening. So <laughs> thank you, Tobias, for supporting us here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Stay relevant to meet the fast changing demand for ATEX requirement. Wow. Maybe also a title, which is um, yeah hard to tell. What is not really the topic? Um, when we were in the preparation for this, I think you said let's focus on the heated line, and I said, hey, no, we we, we take the, the we take the the entire approach. But you are right, James, and with this title, the newest developments, especially the newest requirements for ATEX are in the heated sample line area. And um, so that's that's gonna be one of the main topics. And we are going to see the dancing, what we saw at the beginning here with my nice, which by the way, I have stolen from the production. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pause the production because I've stolen it. No, we have this Gossen Metravat, uh, um, uh, yeah, Metriso, um, which we can uh, use to measure if there is conductivity or not, right? Uh, and we will come back to this. Okay, Tobias, maybe you can give us the next slide and we can talk about a little bit um, the out wow. view. Yeah, and the outlook for the upcoming webinars. Um, I think I'm, again, I'm super happy to that we could arrange very, I would say, uh, yeah, very high profile companies, leading companies um, in their uh, speciality, in their, um, in their turf, in, in, in the area they are working with. 
Probably, I mean, it's big names here. Um, Gartner Denver Thomas is a big name for the peristaltic pumps. I think that's going to be a very interesting insight to see, okay, how can we change the peristaltic pump? What is so important about the peristaltic pump mm -hmm. in our sample conditioning and in our sample coolers? KNF, obviously, um, our cooperation in the field of transportation and sample pump, not condensate pumps, but sample pumps. And then, um, yeah, uh, I'm very excited also to have another of the global player, I would call it, um, the friends from SIC uh, on board at uh, 21st of, of October. Um, I think that's going to be a great session too. Um, I'm also very happy that we made NVENT um, joining us here. Um, probably NVENT is not a big name for everyone or is, is becoming a big name. Um, Raycam, Raycam Heater, that's probably what, what, what is best known, right, Jameson? Definitely. World number, <laughs> probably the most well-known heater in the, in, the, in the hydrocarbon industry. Yeah, but, but especially with the, with the brand Raycam, right? Not yeah. uh, probably because the name, uh, the company name changed quite some times. Um, so that could be a reason that uh, this is not such a big name. And then I'm um, also very excited, um, but then this will already be December. <laughs> so we are getting to the winter times. And the topic is very nice for the winter times, which is Schramm, our partner for enclosures all types of enclosures, um, protecting uh, enclosures. I will show just one product when we talk about our ATEX gas sample probe in a few seconds or in a few minutes. And um, yeah, they, they will give us some nice insights. What, what can we do in terms of protection, protecting houses, um, just from yeah, small shelters, small boxes, up to full analyzer container. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to have these guys uh, on board as well. Yeah. So, um, okay. Give me, yeah, the next slide, Tobias. Thank you so much. Um, because there's one topic which I'm, I must admit I'm very excited. Um, Jameson, electro polishing and silconeads or, or silica coatings right right yeah this is really a uh, you know uh, especially for the petroleum industry yeah we talk about i always have uh, encounters like memories and uh, you know like uh, not just memories but you know coming to calibration particularly in the area of uh, moisture analysis yeah whereby the absorptions and these options and some of these components whereby they uh, even in uh, as much as a very very small ppm of h2s you see uh, mm -hmm. yeah many more there's so many things we would like to talk about mm -hmm. and i think it's going to be super exciting why uh, if we look at this and if we look at the um i mean this is now running length, but uh, you could also imagine this on a coil. And this is a key component in the sample handling system. I mean, um, if, if, if you look at this, the surface of the heated sample line, depending on the measurement, right? But the surface of the heated sample line, Okay, this is now PTFE or PFA we are using here, but imagine it's, but regarding the surface, it doesn't matter, um, can represent the biggest surface inside the entire sample system. And um, again, this is probably something why I'm so convinced and why I like to say that the heated sample line is just underestimated. The, if the impact of the tube inside the heated sample line, depending on what measurement you have, can be huge on the analyzer results. Yes. And um, I must admit, I was, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, this is really a very detailed problem. And therefore, I'm super happy that we arranged to get these two experts on board. Yeah. It's Johannes Kutt. He's the guy from Silcotech. 
uh, Germany. Yeah, he will explain us um, and tell us the, the technical background um, regarding the silica coatings and the possibilities we have there. And um, the other expert there is Benedict Henkel. He's the managing director of the company, Henkel Electropolish. And he would show us, and this is unique, and that's probably also the reason why I'm so excited, because in this webinar, we will announce um, our, our partnership there, uh, which is so far just a U.S. company. Um, it's, it's, it's possible to produce heated sample lines with electro-polished tubes inside on in endless dimensions. So um, this is, I think, uh, yeah, it's gonna be very exciting. And um, I, when we had the present, the preparation for this webinar, it was also super exciting that we can give some advice to the people that they know, okay, probably when where is the, uh, I wouldn't say the advantage and disadvantage of these two systems, but can I use both? And uh, what is a typical application where I would use A or B or both? So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be very exciting. And I can tell you, Jemsen, we are going to learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, yeah. Especially for the gas analyzer people as well, you see, all the sample transfer, whether it's to the gas chromatograph, particularly whereby they are measuring small PPM and even PPB, you see yeah. the, the, mind, the kind of memory effects, the kind of response time, right? Uh, it's going to be very excited. Just mentioning gas chromatograph, not only saying that those like uh, moisture detector, infrared, uh, ultraviolet, Many more, so yeah. As far as analytical is concerned, we need a, you know, for extractive system, we need a sample transport line. That is where the technology lies in between this transferring. Yeah, yeah. And like I said before, uh, I could not, I, or I could not imagine that this is such a big impact on the measurement results. Just the memory effects. And there's only, uh, one of the effects we can avoid with this technology. So, um, yeah, like I said, super excited um, and uh, very happy and thankful to have these two experts in one meeting on board. Because I must admit, Jameson, that's also not very, uh, let's say, normal. Um, usually one company would say, okay, I would like to have my own spot and then the other company wants to present that. No, but because... Um, and, and uh, I like the, the, the approach here uh, to bring them together and um, yeah, uh, to, 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 to give our audience a good overview. I think this is something we really like. Okay, all right. Yeah, Jemsen, don't worry, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a good um, advice here again. Um, that after each webinar now in the future, we are going to post the webinar also on YouTube. Um, I think we are going to share this even outside LinkedIn so that there is access to our webinars and uh, that you have a chance to uh, look at the, or to, to view the webinar um, uh, on, on YouTube whenever you, you want to, right? Um, because I heard, uh, I just get one feedback that sometimes it's difficult to understand what we say and at the same time to read and understand what is in our presentation. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's just going to be in another good opportunity uh, for the people to, to see what we produced here. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh yeah, Jensen. Maybe you can you can give an overview. Okay. Yeah. So you know, like uh, as far as uh, you know, our our EX the hazardous uh, area concern, we actually develop and we also produce uh, sample probes of uh, different holding temperature. Okay, and probably you will see the the live demonstration and. 
Item number two is probably the heated sample line. And this heated sample line is one of our UPV. Our UPV is the most excited uh, patented technology uh, in the area of ATEX. Right, so the third item we have is the gas cooler. And the gas cooler, this is a processed gas cooler as well as used it for emission. So whether it's positive pressure or negative pressure, both in zone one as well as in zone two. And uh, for the positive pressure, you can use an auto drainer that we can drain it from the bottom, right? If, if you're in zone two, you can, we can have a peristaltic pump, right? Finally, you know, we put all together, all right, into we can have an options to have a analytical house, yeah? So this is all, all the products are produced from Germany on the factory. Yeah, and maybe I can try to do the live demo here. Um, when we see the next slide, I think we have a short overview of um, the different um, solutions we have. So when we developed, that's a little bit an insight or a background information, when, when we developed our uh, gas sampling probes, um, yeah, we thought, what is the, you, the unique selling point of, our, of the PSG probes? And I mean, we stressed this in many, many webinars here already. And I would still say one of the biggest advantages we have is the big filter and the big filter surface. Because we believe that uh, low maintenance and high availability of the measurement is directly connected to the characteristics of the probe, right? And um, yeah, therefore, uh, James and I mean, we had many discussions about that. Uh, I told you that um, the development is quite challenging, so to say. Um, but why is that? I mean, this, this big filter in, in, in terms of operations has huge, um, yeah. I would say, advantages. Right. But it, in the development of the solution, it's not very easy. Yeah. It, it also, I think the, another, another two more area about the USP, about the product, was that the, the entire material on the uh, body was actually, is, the material is uh, stainless steel 316 Ti. This is a uh, very much more uh, anti-corrosion or, or corrosion resistance. So this one point, another point about the... Uh, sample probe that we produce is actually has incorporated an option is uh, is to eliminate many times when we talk about ex all right area um, when we do uh, say uh, back purging all right and people have uh, options of, of constructing a solenoid valve uh, having a mm -hmm. junction box and mm -hmm. you know to shut off but, you know, as far as EX is concerned, we always incorporated with, you know, always ask our customers to consider to have a pressure reduction shutter valve, an automatic mechanical valve that eliminated most of the electrical requirement at site, right? It's yeah. automatically open uh, after the pressure drop. Yeah, well, this is how it looks like. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, sometimes when, when you are facing... Um, an engineering challenge, it also helps you to improve the entire product. And I would say this was the case in developing our new ATEX probe. Um, why? I mean, uh, Jameson, you know that our standard probes, um, the PSG uh, Plus probes or the PSG Basic probe, they have a stainless steel housing, mm -hmm. right? And um, so we found out, because one of the very crucial things, and you will see this when, when you look into the market, it's uh, only a very rare number of um, uh, companies who can produce 180 degrees C holding temperature for a probe. 150 degrees C is not a big problem. Yeah, 120 degrees C you can reach, let's say, with kind of standard components. But um, so we are very proud that we have a solution here 
for 180 degrees C. And um, this is uh, the reason why I would like to outline it. Um, this is, uh, by the way, manufactured by the company, um, development manufactured by the company Schramm. So these are the guys who will join us in our webinar at the beginning of December. Um, and um, so we had to kind of redevelop a new housing because we had to make sure that the heat we produce with the heating elements inside the probe, um, yeah, we, will not go away in order to make sure that we can hold this 180 degrees C even in very cold environment. And at the same time, Jameson, remember when we had this discussion, you said, hey, Jörg, um, there is um, solutions out there. They have a higher IP protection class. Precisely. And this is an, yeah, and this is another <laughs> super great advantage of this thing, you know, because uh, even with a, with a junction box, you can hopefully see here, yeah, everything is so well connected that, um, you know, we can ensure that this uh, comes with a very high IP protection class. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's lift the secret, Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think it's interesting. Is it a clear picture? You can good, you can see that, okay? Very well, very good. Okay, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, so inside, what do we see here? First of all, um, like I said, and this was very important in our development, we wanted to make sure that uh, the surface of the probe of the probe body will remain in this very big size, right? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, when we had the discussion here with our experts, we said, hey, if someone is not willing to change a filter in a safe environment, and I mean, that's our selling argument for the PSG, for the other PSG probes outside the ATEX area, um, we said, okay, if this is an ATEX environment, imagine how, you know, you, you, I mean, that's an area where you should, if ever possible, avoid to be there because it's mm -hmm. simply dangerous, right, Jensen? Yeah, they are more reluctant here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that we finally managed and I'm very thankful um, for the R&D team that they managed really to develop a solution like this. It looks massive. Um, as you can mm -hmm. see here, the heating uh, cartridges um, and it has to be massive because that was, like I said, uh, sharing one of the, yeah, what well, means secrets, but sharing um, uh, for sure um, one, one of the challenges in the development. You have this very big filter body and um, you have to make sure that all of this at the coldest spot is heated up to 180 degrees C. And this is the reason why we have these two big boys um, they are in compliance with the newest ATEX regulations. And um, another very big advantage I would like to outline here, there is no um, additional limiter needed. So if you decide to use this probe for your ATEX application, you need no additional limiter or controller. It's self-regulating. So the only thing you need to do is to connect to the power and then you can um, you can uh, really operate this one. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's a big advantage, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole, the whole, in fact, the whole shift, uh, in fact, is really coming from uh, uh, projects on the petrochemicals. All right, the specification that is sometimes is difficult to, to change the, the mindset, but rather, you know, we, we follow according to the specs that they're asking for IP65, right? So <laughs> this is, this is a, the entire shift from the uh, standard uh, weather cover that we had uh, to an IP65 enclosure. And also, yeah. yeah. And also, I think another area that, you know, the, the cold spot that unlike in the past, uh, uh, in the emission monitoring, uh, the whole of these things was that in the, classification area, the whole thing was heated. You can see the two, uh, the heater, or, the, or you call it the big boys, <laughs> as well as the, as well as the, you know, more people will be much more reluctant uh, to go up 
to, to change the any maintenance as far as uh, hazardous area is concerned because they really need extra uh, hazardous approval or work permit. Right, so considering all the factors that we newly developed and uh, shifting the standard probes to uh, upgraded version today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 true. Okay, Jemsen, um, let's continue here um, with uh, the, the the news development, and maybe you you can describe this in your words. Yeah, yeah. See, in, uh, from from the very very uh, early early years in my career, uh, actually, I work uh, ten years as a system integrator companies. So you know. Uh, we know that in analytical line, a long analytical line, there's always have certain restriction or constraint, uh, such as banding, a banding radius, right? So when we goes into the analyzer house, and when we goes into from the house and into the analyzer cabinet for some reason, right? This is a limitation of the banding radius. When mm -hmm. we come into yeah, so this is one of the proud thing I, I would like to show. You know, if we, if we have the sample uh, over in Germany right now, is that how flexible in today we call that the having a same exactly the same external jacket, the TPU, the TPU jacket cut to length, all right? That any other that you can see, you can't see with our naked eyes, but it look exactly the same. But we can really bend so much more flexible than the one that in conventional in the market yeah and second uh, second things probably is another area about safety all right so should i hand it over back to you yeah yeah maybe uh, i can i can just show it here uh, this yeah. is uh, the flexibility uh, jemson mm -hmm. was talking about and um yeah i think that's that's a big advantage um if uh, you have a line which has, which is uh, at the end more more flexible, yeah. um, and that could help in the construction. But I mean, I must admit, Jensen, um, if I was the operator, I wouldn't care too much. I would say, okay, it's the problem of the system integrator. You do whatever is needed, and if the bending radius is relatively low, then <laughs> yeah, just just handle this. Um, regarding safety, that might be a different situation. What do you think? I think uh, let me add one more point about you know that that is the uh, the banding where we are mentioned earlier that in the early days when we when we you know laying the heated line on top of the cable tray and you know many people think that the cable tray itself in order to have such a banding radius of at least six di six times the uh, external diameter of the uh, heated line that mm -hmm. you sometimes require quite a wide or it's called it a big or wide cable tray requirement not a simple a, a thin a small cable tray they cannot do the work and many a times that we can buy a high quality heated line but we pass it over to the some uh, subcontractor to lay the wire the, you know there are many times that there are possibility of uh, having a uh, damage during the installation because of the banding radius, right? Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. one of the things that is very, very common that many people are unknown, right, to this black holes. Right? This is one thing that we have a big, big breakthrough in terms of... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's true. I mean, that's one of the other advantages that this new uh, flex line is has a protection uh, if you know that the inside will not be hurt even if you overstress uh, so to say the mm -hmm. the bending radius yeah that's 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 another advantage and what you are saying is very true i mean uh, again it's a very special product and uh, when when you talk to the contractors on site uh, or on the operation side they say okay it doesn't matter if i will lay this type of cable or if it's a p power cable with a very big um, inside, so um, you, you are right. That can cause. Some I think. Issues. I think the PowerPoint slides that they will show the three, uh, you know, three lay of uh, analytical heated line. You can see that the three different banding radius, 
right? The one on the extreme right or the bending the most, it is something that is, I think many, many of them will be catched by surprise if they are familiar with what we are talking about. You know, how can a heated line can bend up to as much as you can see the 90 degrees, right? A small mm. bend in the, on the cable tray, a thin cable tray, right? Usually, I mean, usually a standard bending radius, you look at the one on the, uh, the bottom, those are the standard bending radius that many people do not appreciate. They are not aware of something that, you know, uh, the products that we have, uh, these are things that it really save a lot of uh, overseeing in terms of the cost of ownership and the performance of the analyzer. Not no, I think, it's, I think it's not just cost of ownership, James. I think we should look at this also from a financial point of view. I mean, if the bending radius is wider, you need more space. And yeah. space yeah. in an analyzer house is money. Space in, on the cable tree is money. You have to buy the cable tree. You have to lay down the cable tree. So, um, yeah, maybe in one of our next webinars, we should put it down in numbers and say, okay, th this is really saving money. Yeah, um, Because, like I said, extended banding radius will cause more installation costs and will uh, also cause more investment costs in terms of cable tree, right? Yeah, yeah. And al yeah. also um, the number of lines you could technically put together. Yeah. I mean, if, if you think now um, you have these type of lines, like you can see this in the PowerPoint picture. Um, yeah, if, if the bending radius of one of these guys is less, you might need more space in between. So the cable tree must be bigger. Yeah. We should really maybe uh, yeah, focus not just from the technical side, but also from the commercial side, outline the advantage, yeah. right? One, one of the points I think I'd like to address is that what happened, what happened right, if they were to bend the, the, the conventional heated line, uh, there's over banding. What will happen? What is the consequences, you see? But many people are not aware that, you know, if they would have uh, too much and uh, over the tolerance, that the heater element, all right, the, the heater element inside, for example, a self-regulating heater, there is a possibility that it will have an open circuit, all right? It, the heater will create a cold spot in between some yeah. of this time. Uh, these, are, these are the area whereby... These are the areas whereby, you know, they must understand that why banding during the installation yeah. is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this is not the case with um, stainless steel tubes. Um, probably not the case. But especially when you have uh, PTFE tubes inside for the emission monitoring, very common. Um, you, you might, you know, that, that you, if you overband, you might have a damage on the line and you don't see it. You yeah. can just yeah. see that, that your flow is reduced and you think, hey, okay, that could be the, 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 the gas sampling probe. So, yeah, okay. Um, but, Jameson, as I started with the dancing, uh, I would like to continue with the dancing. <laughs> no, uh, to be honest, maybe you can shortly uh, go to the... Um, yeah, okay, that's that's what I already said in the introduction that, um, yeah, the, the surface area of the heated line is very, very important. So, Jameson, um, I think the, the left one is more the traditional one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, this is, so to say, the status quo. In many of the ATEX projects, mm -hmm. status quo is, uh, yeah, let's say the the standard ATEX lines. It's a standard compliance uh, that, you know, most of the people in, in practice uh, in generally, uh, all the ATEX, the one is on the right. Yeah. We call it the EX1. In our, in our model, we call it EX1. It's a standard uh, EX compliance. Yeah. I think it will be, we will be very, very excited to show them what is EX2 and what is EX3. Yeah, that's something that's going to be an eye opener for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the same. So, first of all, uh, what is the background? So, EX1, if we stay in our um, system, if you look here, you can probably see, can you see it, Jameson? The heater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, this is the this is the heater. And so far in the past, it was enough to just consider the heating cable as one of the yeah, uh, potential um, risks inside the heated sample line. So as soon as you have or as you had a ATEX certificate for the heater, not just for the heating cable, but also for the, for the entire system, which means the shrinking and uh, um, all other components, you had a full certification of the heater only. Okay, now, um, I mean, the safety requirements are um, increasing and we can see that in the last or the newest version of the ATEX requirements, um, we also have to have a look at um, other risks. I mean, it was always needed to have a look at the risk of electrostatic load, even when you talk about a heated sample line. And um, I think we had this example here quite often. If you look at a junction box in an analyzer house, if you look at a junction box yeah, installed in an ATEX area, no one would use a junction box without having an ATEX certificate. Even if it's a very small junction box. Now, it's interesting that for the heated line, people don't care about the risk which might come from the outside surface, meaning from the potential which could be, um, yeah, uh, come from the at electrostatic load of the line. And therefore uh, we developed AX2 and AX3. And here, maybe I put myself on the solo layout. Um, hopefully, yeah, it's, it's good to, to see, <coughs> sorry, when, when we look at this, um, what is the difference? So if there is electrostatic load outside of the line, in the AX3 line, we manage to have a conductive jacket. What does it mean? Uh, maybe I just going to show this with a non ATEX standard line. Um, so if, if we look at, uh, this is a classical um, PSG line, um, non-conductive. So please have a look on our measurement here. So if I uh, combine one with the other, there is no, there's no reaction. Yeah, there's no reaction here in the measuring device. Now, if we do the same with the AX3 line. I'm just going to put, uh, uh, you can, can you see that? Yeah, okay, I'm just going to put one here and I'm just going to put one another here. And wow. here you can see, this was my dancing at the beginning, that there is uh, this conductivity. You can even see a spark. I, I never noticed this. <laughs> Interesting. You can see a spark. Yeah, um, probably you cannot see because it's very small, but uh, it's a small spark here. Um, okay, what does it mean? There's electrostatic, there's electric flow from here to here. And um, the, um, what, what we managed to develop here is the full system. This means, and now I need to understand what is the best way to show it. If we do the same with a cap, yeah, and I put one here and one here. There's uh, there's even electrostatic uh, electrical flow between the caps and the jacket. So what you would do in an installation with the AX3 line, you would put these two groundings. One grounding is for um, uh, the inside tube, I mean, it's sure whenever you have particles or fluids flowing around there, there can be electrostatic loads from the inside of the line. And for the jacket and the outside of the line, you have the another ground. And with this technology, yeah, you can be sure that there will not be any dangerous electrostatic load, um, which I would say is a big advantage.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, having said that, you know the we have uh, we call the EX one, which is a standard EX uh, heated line, and we have uh, another two options of EX two and EX three. All right. So let's let's say you know one of them is a conductive jacket, and compared to the standard, which is non-conductive jacket. So in terms of application, all right. In terms of safety, yeah. So can we can we put you know, ourselves in the, the consequences, the possibility, uh, you know, if a customer's in the petroleum industries, what are the things that will help them if they, you know, if they consider with and without a conductive jacket in, in, in the names of safety? Why, why should they choose a, a conductive jacket, heated line? Yeah, I think if you can ensure that your line, this is the established concept, I would say, if you can ensure that the line is everywhere grounded in terms of a cable tray, for example, these cable trays are uh, grounded. If you can ensure this um, and you're not uh, extending a certain surface or, uh, yeah, um, um, which is not grounded, I think you are even safe with a standard line. Um, but if you say, okay, uh, if a line comes from one cable tray to the other cable tray, um, and you cannot ensure that it's grounded everywhere, um, yeah, I think you are in somewhere in between because you have a big, I mean, the outer jacket for a heated sample line is relatively big, and um, somehow you have to ensure uh, that it's it, that you do something against the electrostatical load. So, yeah. at so, the end, the, the at the end, Jameson, the operator is responsible for mm-hmm. for this security. And um, but I think from the discussion we have in the industry is that we see um, you know that people are start they start to look into this because mm-hmm. safety is always a big, a big task. And yeah. so I think, um, yeah, the, the, the extra safe way is to use AX2 line um, suitable for zone uh, 2B. And um, yeah, uh, and if you even have um, zone 1 um, and uh, 2C, um, then yeah, a three line will be uh, the the right one. Yeah, does does the weather like winter uh, has has any impact uh, on this tactic? Yeah, like in the, in the, in the, let's say in the in particularly in the countries that they have a winter season, and you know that is the weather is super dry. Um, does it, inc- you know, it increases the static if, uh, when we go to, to touch a car, you know, so things like this uh, in the, on the non-static uh, yeah. heated line yeah. compared all, to all a of, static heated yeah. line? All, all, of this, all of this has to be considered, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely, okay. yeah. Pressure makes difference, so this is changing. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what we would like to show here, because... Um, uh, the, we would like to show that uh, the safety concepts uh, we made here or the developments we made here are proven proven by a third body. Uh, so this is not just something we, we uh, yeah, are telling here, um, which means we are, uh, when you decide for a heated sample line, uh, AX, standard AX, uh, AX2, AX3, um, uh, or in the field of AX2 and AX3, you get a full certificate from us. And uh, I would say this is special because um, so far it was only possible to share the certificate of the ATEX certificate from the uh, supplier or from the manufacturer um, of the heating cable, but now we can share the full ATEX certificate. And I think that's a big advantage that a third party yeah, proved our um, uh, our concept here. And um, 
therefore I'm, I'm, I'm very happy we, we, we have the solution and we have the proof of this. Great, right, great, right. yes. Okay, Jensen, I think we have a little bit uh, um, to uh, look on the time. Yeah, <laughs> we have to have the gas cooler on the pipeline. <laughs> That's, we have to go a bit faster. <laughs> that's that's absolutely that's absolutely true. Yeah, but maybe you can um, explain a little bit uh, of uh, yeah the the things the people have to consider by uh, the installation of the lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, I would like to say you know these are the area whereby many people buy purchase the heated line. Uh, this you know as well as I know that we want to buy a quality heated line. But I always want to emphasize uh, is during the installation. These are two areas. What do we mean by installation is the end caps, the, the ending where we put the PT100 inside or we would have put the electrical wiring inside, the two end caps. You see, when we sometimes, many times, in fact, you, you bought the heated line uh, maybe in a drum form, right? Maybe 300 meter and you do it, you cut it to length at sight. One of the important things about the end cap installation, we have you can show you can actually found it on the YouTube, but more importantly, uh, as well as the installation, please ask for an installation guidebook from us. It mm -hmm. is so important to, to get this installation guidebook from us because it will be too late, you know, to realize the mistakes after a costly investment on uh, getting. Uh, uh, permits and then they have the uh, scaffolding, uh, running of the cable tray, in, completed the whole installation, then we tested, we realized something is goes wrong. So get it right, all right, by getting an installation guidebook from us and read it through before you do anything. Yeah, or getting an, uh, an advice from us, right? This is also yeah. something I would like to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, Cooler. Jameson, I think for the cooler, it's a little bit different situation compared to the gas sampling probe and to the heated sample line. Because for the cooler, you can do something to avoid that the cooler will be in the ATEX environment, right? Yeah. I mean, for, for the gas sampling probe, you have to decide where's the place where you want to sample, where you have to probably you have to sample when it's an emission monitoring, right? So um, maybe the authorities tell you, you have to sample there. So there is no, let's say, um, yeah, there is no um, other way than installing the sample probe at this location. That's a little bit similar, I would say, for the heated sample line, because if the, if, you know, the, the probe has to transport it as, from point A to point B and somewhere in between is an ATEX area, you have to handle it, right? Absolutely, yeah. But it's different for the coolers because, I mean, you could, even if you put a cooler into an ATEX area, you could, for example, install a shelter or analyzer container and inside the analyzer container, there will be non-ATEX, for example. This is possible, yeah. right? Highly possible, yeah. many, many times, in fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. But sometimes we also see situation when you cannot avoid, or I mean, we also have to uh, yeah, outline an installation or the, the analyzer container in ATEX is already a relatively costly thing. And um, sometimes you have the situation that you just want to combine the analyzer with, for example, a CUDA. And therefore, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here. I mean, we talked about the big boys uh, before, but I'm sitting here in front of two of our ATEX uh, coolers. Um, so the one cooler uh, we see in the overview um, here is the BCR02. And um, the guy we see here is on the next slide. Um, will be the BCR03. Um, um, and this comes with one, this comes with two or even four gas paths. And I think that's a big advantage. It's, it's a 
um, has very high cooling capacity, very high power uh, for a cooler. And even if you have a high flow, you can see this um, at the overview, or you can uh, obviously find this in our data sheets um, that you can handle this type of cooler with a very high flow, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, we should mention, even the zone two cooler is third party certified. Yeah, something we don't have to do, but uh, we want to go the extra safe way. And this is the reason why we also um, certify this cooler. Different to the very big boy, I would call it, <laughs> um, which, which will be the BCR05. Um, BCR05 is also for installations in ATEX Zone 1. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you can see from the size and from the dimension that um, it still has it still has a lot of power. And uh, obviously, for the ATEX Zone One equipment, you need uh, by law uh, you need to have a third party uh, certification. So um, this is let's say the small lineup we have here for the for the coolers. Yeah, in fact, one of the one of the important things about Zone One is that you we are able to see the temperature, the cooling temperature. There's a gauge right in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's true. Um, something you can see here, which is different uh, to the temperature controller we are using here. Um, so um, this is uh, the, the the big advantage, um, uh, I would say, but. Uh, this um, uh, yeah really indicates the temperature here. Yeah, in fact, uh, the last the last uh, you know we have another three minutes. I think uh, to answer some of the questions that please. We have oh. oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, not I'm not sorry. from here, but was that you know who 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 are the end user that is using our products? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have I have uh, listed a couple of uh, and you. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I sorry, I did a mistake. Uh, yeah. I should have, I should have, should have brought yeah. it here. So yeah. these are the few uh, that uh, within my area. Yeah, my area. I just put up these slides in the yeah yesterday afternoon. Uh, we have a couple of installation like in uh, in Thailand, like in Thai oil. Uh, IRPC, which is a petrol uh, chemical. Uh, yeah. PTT is a national oil uh, from of the Thai, uh, Thailand. You know, so these right. are petroleum industries in Thailand uh, using our products. Uh, those uh, there are two refineries in the Vietnam. We call it mm -hmm. the Nissan refineries as well as the uh, Vincent refinery. The B they call it Binsan B S R. Yeah, these are there are two refineries in in. In Vietnam, uh, we have this installation, right? Yeah. Of course, in China, uh, this was uh, we we have sixty uh, BCR zero two. Uh, it was actually placed the order last year, but the installation was this year. Was at Zhejiang right. Refinery, yeah, sixty units of uh, EX gas cooler uh, in, in the in China refinery. Right. So similarly to uh, Sinanis, and these are the few that. I just put it up for the 2000 and 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Uh, these are a few installations. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's probably good to, to share and to show Similarly some. Similarly to so, Petronas Malaysia as well. To show some reference. Yeah, yeah. I'm very proud and uh, very thankful, Jameson. Many of these names are, uh, yeah, uh, caused <laughs> by you, <laughs> or oh, you, you are responsible. No, no, our, our partners, our partners in this region. <laughs> yeah, they, but still, yeah, but still, you made it, you made it happen, and I think it's great to see. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think on the next slide, um, we would like to invite everyone who is not already following our company side. Uh, please do so, and um, yeah, again, inquiries, questions. Our team is there uh, and happy to to be contacted. And um, like I said, uh, we hope you guys had a very good summer. And uh, we are now looking forward in two weeks' time 
to have our webinar, um, like I said, regarding the surface treatment. I think that's going to be very new. I mean, some of the things you hear today um, was something we wanted to combine in a different way, but uh, in two weeks' time, it's going to be completely new and something you have not heard from us. So um, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm, I'm looking forward. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care, Jensen. <laughs> and Tobias, thank you so much for uh, being the magic man in, in, in the back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, all the supporters and audience. Yeah. We, we shall see you again in the next fortnight. Yeah, we will. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>